What is happening guys? Welcome back to Red Beer's Garage. On today's episode, we're gonna be doing a lot of upgrades to the 32 Ford uh, Shriner go-kart that we got. So starting over here, we're gonna be upgrading it from that small centrifugal clutch to the Juggernaut 30 series from Go Power Sports. This CVT will let us rev up to 9,000 RPMs and will give us a ton of takeoff power. So we're gonna try to make the thing wheelie on takeoff, gear it pretty aggressively. Uh, getting into the engine stuff, we have a Hot 265 cam. This is one of our favorite cams from Go Power Sports. They also have a Fire 265, and we use these two cams on mini boxing yard carts a lot. We're gonna be slapping in a billet rod in that engine, uh, and we'll go over the rare parts that we have in that engine and kind of show it off the flywheel and charging system uh, when we do those parts. Uh, we have a quick release because it's hard to get in that little chassis and your big boy wants to ride in it, so that's gonna help me get in it. Also, Go Power Sports have, has these super heavy duty flywheel covers. These are like probably double if not triple the thickness of a regular flywheel shroud. So these are super sick and they're cheap. It's gonna protect you a ton because if you remember a while back, we had a starter cup fail on us and shattered our side cover. So this is gonna protect us in the event if that ever happens again. Uh, we got some new HD Manco pedals. This is gonna allow us to put the pedals all the way forward in the chassis and give us more leg room. A new live axle, as well as these big fat daddy 18 inch slicks. We had these on gravy bones. And then we put a more aggressive treaded tire on it. So I think these are gonna match that hot rod theme perfectly with some 10 inch modular wheels on the front. These are like a mini bike style wheel from Go Power Sports. You can use them on go-karts. You can put disc brakes on them. They're super sick. So all these parts are gonna make this hot rod the way it should have been from factory. And we have a huge surprise at the end of this build because I know a lot of guys want to see a crazy engine in it. We have a really rare thousand dollar part to put on this uh, to bring out that true hot rod nature. So stay tuned for the last video of this series. We're gonna keep it a secret until that video comes out. So stay tuned for that. So let's get the car in here. First, we need to fit these wheels because I don't know what we're gonna have to do to fit these wheels and tires. I'm gonna try to stay away from cutting much of the body, but in the end, we may have to do a little bit of trimming. So we're gonna get the factory wheels and tires pull it off and slap these new ones on and get it to looking like a true hot rod. Cheaper, mister, you're really strong. So we ran into our first problem. This is a three quarter inch bolt instead of a five eighths, which is nice because it's beefier, but I'm gonna see if I have some Manco style spindles that has the five eighths bolt already on this to replace this with. We may have to modify the steering arm, but it's just something we're gonna have to do to get these wheels to fit. So the original bearings popped right in these wheels. So that's awesome. We don't have to change anything. So it looks like on this body, we're gonna have to cut a bulk of this lip off. And then I think we can fit this wheel just perfect. So we're gonna get an angle grinder or something and just take a good chunk. I'm gonna leave the turn down on this lip just enough so it's not just a flat piece of fiberglass that still has that curve. But I'm gonna take at least a half inch. If I can get away with it, three quarters of an inch off this entire lip. And the axle was stepped down from factory to a, I'm assuming from a one inch to a three quarter inch. So we would have had to got rid of this axle either way. So it's good that we're doing this. I just wanted to test fit, see what we're gonna get by with. 
the front wheels is working out really good. Uh, we're only place we're rubbing is Max turning on the actual inside of this chassis. So I don't think we even have to mess with anything. We can just put a steering stop or something to keep from rubbing the body. Uh, so I think now we can pull the engine, drop this axle, put our new live axle in, and go ahead and trim these plastics out. Jeez, look at the butt on that. He must work out. I've never seen a drum brake set up like that. So it utilizes the axle bearing holes. So you use these longer bolts. And I don't know who made this, but I'm definitely not gonna get rid of this setup. I think it'd be cool to get this re-chromed or polish it up. I'll probably be able to polish that rust off there and use this on something else. That's a sweet, like a real car setup. I don't know I am. Now I need to find some shoes for it. Yeah, I need to see where they're going to need to sit. So we have the tire too much in. There's no way this tire can go this much. It has to be about a half inch out because this tire won't even spin right now because it's touching the chassis. So we have one of 12 options. Um, we can cut some of this lip off, you know, like still leave the bend to it and just cut the flat portion off all the way around and then go to a more point back here. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do. Uh, I think you're gonna have to do both things. Or, yeah, I can put another piece of one inch square tubing on top of this one for testing, like two engine risers on each side and lay the body and that would raise the back one inch. Now, I don't think it would hurt anything to do that. So real quick, I'm gonna grab two engine risers because I have two sitting right there, slide them on the back and we'll see. Maybe we can fit with just engine risers and not have to trim the body, so give me one second. So Go Power Sport sells these engine risers. They're just one inch square tubing, and you put them under a Predator 212 if you need the, the rise from them. Let's go on each side. Probably need you to help with this. Only thing is there's a gap at the seats now. I think I'm gonna cut the lip and see if I can get by without putting those risers in there. I really don't wanna do that because I feel if, if I put the risers here, I need to put them up front as well because the body's not gonna to wanna to sit on that square tubing correct. So I'm gonna play with that next, get, but it looks sick though. I haven't really got back. <laughs> See, that's what it shows up for. Yeah, back. it does. So I measured three quarters of an inch and then it tapers down to a half inch here. Here's the main problem area. So I have a carbide bit. This is what I think will eat through it. I used to have some drill bits that are made to cut through drywall and those will probably be in good in this uh, situation. I can't find them, must throw them away. Uh, so this is an eighth inch bit. So I'm gonna drill eighth inch holes all around here just to have areas to connect to. And I'm gonna slide this in said eighth inch hole and then connect them. I'm gonna have my lovely wife, once you get some of their pickle, I'm gonna have her hold a shop back close to me and drag it along as I cut it to keep the dust down. Uh, it should keep all the dust down actually. Uh, so we can get the shop back set up and then we be cutting it, players.
So I'll take an angle grinder, we'll get the back, we'll probably take it outside when we do that and wear respirators. And we'll just hit this and make it just pretty and smooth it in because it's kind of cut on an angle in some places. So we'll make sure it's a flat edge all the way around. Then we'll taper this just a fuzz. And uh, I think that'll be good. And there's some places we can open up a little bit more. I'll just do it by eye. Then the main cut by measurement, three quarters of an inch, and it drops down to half inch right there. And I'll take more of this corner off with the uh, flap disc as well. So that's about it. All right, so when we set the bed or the body all the way down on there, our tire is rubbing and we've trimmed the, the outside lip. But the biggest problem is the axle is too far forward. You can see if I move that tire back about an inch, it looks like it'll be better placed in that wheel well. And I think we're still going to have to lift the body, but we can keep the body lift to a minimum to keep the tire tuck as much as possible. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Unfortunately, I'm gonna cut the uh, axle hangers off, move them one inch behind uh, where they're at now, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull the entire engine, battery box, everything out of this area, just to get it ready, uh, because we're gonna be building that engine anyways. And when we raise the engine to where we're gonna put it, uh, I don't think, because the CVT is gonna be a problem, so I think we're gonna put the engine over top of the axle, and uh, we're gonna have to redo the exhaust and everything. And I think the battery box will have to move. I'm not sure yet, we'll have to see, but let's go ahead and pull this all apart, get the axle hangers cut off and move back. So after moving the axle hangers back, it's actually like almost perfect. So this is with the body sitting all the way down, no risers. And you can hear we have a little bit of rubbing. So my thoughts is, is I'm gonna put a quarter inch spacer, maybe half inch, because these tires do swell a little bit uh, when, you know, at like 50 mile an hour, they're gonna swell. So I can put a half inch little puck on the front and the rear right here to raise it just a little bit to keep from that but i think that tuck is so weak i mean of course if we pull it up just right there there's no rubbing and that's a quarter of an inch so i think a quarter of an inch will possibly do it and it isn't like if we do a quarter of an inch we can't go back and put another quarter if we do get any rubbing so all we did was move those axle hangers back and then trim the lip. Both needed to be done. I haven't cleaned this lip up yet, but I'll do it before we go like on the final, you know, build out where we're gonna powder cut the frame. So now we can start prepping our engine setup because we did have to cut the engine plate off. It had like a really thin piece of steel right there. You can see, and it was kind of floppy back there. So we cut it out. And what we're gonna do is put the engine over the axle and it's only gonna be like a quarter of an inch hovering above the axle to get everything tucked so we can use this hood area. So we're gonna have to modify the CVT and do some stuff. So let's get right into that, build the engine plate, getting the CVT modified, and then we'll be good to start building the engine. So let's get to it.
So the reason for cutting this side cover or the side plate, jack shaft plate on this 30 series is to get the engine over as much as possible to line up the holes. I didn't want to run risers or anything and the chain would have gotten into this steel and this is about as skinny as I would go. This is one inch square tubing. So what I did was Go Power Sports has all this stuff. I'll link it down below. They have 5 8 jack shafts. You do have to knock the bearings out of this just like I shown and put Go Power Sports bearings in it because the stock jack shaft is metric in here and then it turns down to 5 8 out here. So I got a lock collar back there and I put two new bearings in, lock collar there and it's perfect spacing to use the spacer that comes with the kit on the front CVT pulley. You can see I have it on there. So it's like dead even with the two back, uh, back sheaths. So then I put the sprocket out here and I haven't tightened this up and the keys in there and everything. Like there's no exposed axle. So, and this is a asphalt card. It isn't like there's gonna be a ton of stress on this. So we shouldn't ever bend this 5.8 shaft. So that's how the engine's gonna be. Now basically we can weld this in the frame to make sure everything is lined up good and then we can start building the engine. All right guys, so that's all we're gonna have for today's video. I hope you like this hot rod. I think it's turning out awesome. Those wheels and tires should have came on it from factory. And a lot of you guys are suggesting a ZZ Top like theme on this thing so that's exactly what we're going to do so after all the videos of us doing these upgrades to it we're going to get the body painted that same red probably like a candy apple red uh to kind of match the zz top and we're going to get the same graphic put down the side of it and i think it'll look sick i'm really pumped i don't want to spoil the surprise but the thousand dollar part that we're putting on it is going to give it that hot rod vibe and it's just going to be sick so i'm really really pumped i've had this part sitting on the shelf for four years and it's like super rare to find this so i think it's going to be awesome putting this on the hot rod go-kart so if there's anything you guys want to see make sure to put put it in the comment section below because we are listening we uh listen to you guys on the theme of it the zz top theme so we definitely want to know what you think we should do we're going to get that seat rewrapped and get the purple out of there and um so if you have any cool ideas, let us know. We are gonna also have to move the steering to the front of the chassis instead of behind. Uh, so we're gonna have to flip the spindles and we will have to trim some body unfortunately to do that, but that's the only way to get more leg room so an adult can fit in it comfortably because that's what uh, after all I'm building it for. So uh, let us know what you think. Make sure to check out the links in the video description for everything we've used and are going to use on this build. They do help us out. Huge shout out to Go Power Sports for sponsoring today's video. Uh, they sent us all these parts and made this thing i'm just so pumped about this little hot rod and we are going to build a trailer for it uh to pull behind grayson's go-kart and stuff so if we ever do like a parade or something uh someone can be in the hot rod or we can haul the hot rod and i just think it'd be cool for him to go out and play hauling around a car unloading it and stuff um you know living the childhood i wish i had so thank you guys so much for watching we love you guys and god bless